Hey everybody, it's Corey from Linda's Electric Coulters, and today I am here in beautiful Star Valley, Wyoming, with the one and only Linda V. Taylor, and we are working on a log cabin quilt today, ironically. Mm -hmm. Ironically, because <laughs> we are in a log cabin and it's snowy outside. It is, it's it is. It's beautiful today. <laughs> and so we wanted to give you a couple of different um, freehand quilting ideas for a log cabin quilt, some a little bit more basic and easier. That's kind of my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And then she'll take it to be a little bit more elegant, a little bit more classy, a little bit more advanced. So you can have kind of both ways of looking at how you would quilt a log cabin freehand. Sounds good. Let's right. get started. Before we oh. do that though. Oh, click. Yeah, yes. gotta click. Okay. Before we do that though, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. So right down there at the bottom right hand corner, click on that button. And after you click on it, make sure you click on the little bell that shows up so you can get notified whenever we go live or whenever we post new videos. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, Corey, you know log cabins, when they're put together, there's so many ways to put them together. They're so interesting. Right. And so many new things that they're coming up with all the time. But basically, it's a light and a dark side mm -hmm. and kind of a triangular shape. Right. That's how it is. And when you put them together, then you get kind of this look. And you can see how I've taken this feather down all the way through this quilt and, you know, added things like that. And I'll show that. Um, so you can see kind of how I did that feather, but these aren't together, so I can't do that. Right. But um, one of the things that I do do, as I'm stabilizing the quilt, I will either stitch in the ditch, or this is called a serpentine line. Just a little zigzag. Just a little, it's or a, a little curved yeah, zigzag. zigzag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I do this all the way down through the quilt in order to stabilize the quilt. Okay. Okay, so and so that's how I stabilize. Gotcha. All right, got it. Now I'm not sure how the feather would come on this light area, but your light area is where you want to really focus your okay. quilting. Okay. Because the dark is going to probably blend in a little bit. Right. You want something interesting there, but it's a light area that people look at first. Gotcha. Okay, so if maybe the next area was coming around from there, I would just be. First of all, I need to do kind of a, uh, you know, a line through here somehow. All right? Okay. And then I can start my feathers. And they've got to reach into each of these points. And um, I really like doing the, I'm going the wrong direction with this, I think. There we go. around, just kind of follow the edge of that. You see I'm reaching out into each of those areas? Right. I'm going to turn my speed up. I'm in constant. Oh, now I'm in where I need to be. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I love this. I could do this quilt in 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to put stems in them. I love those stems. Now this light area is really going to show off those feathers. Right. Okay. But of course I have to have more on the other side. And um, there would be another block there. For sure. For me, you know. I mean, it's hard just doing this, this one block because they always go together. So we'll start here. Don't worry if every feather looks exactly the same. I, people freak out over the weirdest things. <laughs> Can you believe it? I'm going to put teardrops in these. Normally I would do the same, you know, just put a um, stem in them. But, right. you know, this is a sampler. Yeah, switch it up a little bit. Have some switch couple it up ideas. so yeah. that you have ideas. All right, so that would be, that would be, you know, just wavy on the quilt. Right. Like this example that we have. Okay. Okay, Corey, in this other area, the dark side, mm -hmm. you know, the dark side, <laughs> um, you have to decide where, where you're going to, what you're going to do with that middle thing if you've got the middle like that. It's either going to be on the dark side or the light side. Right. This one would have normally been on the light side. Right. 
but I'm going to use it on the dark side and make a special design in there. I for think sure. that's well, what I'm thinking. Hey, that works I've got for me. it in my head. <laughs> so you could do any kind of a meandering. You could do anything that you wanted to here because it's probably not going to show a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I want to do show you another technique. It's Linda's Egyptian curl. And I'm going to, at the top of it, I'm going to make it a little pointed so it's a little different than right. you've seen. Gotcha. So it would be a really good idea, though, for me to just, from this corner to here, to just use the chalk pencil. And these are just the pastel chalk pencils that I like to use because they erase so easy and they don't stay on the quilt. I'm just making a line there because guess what? Diagonal lines kind of hard for me and yeah yeah that so here I go it's gonna go fast everybody ready I hope I'm ready okay so I'm gonna come up here like this mm -hmm. I'm gonna come in here like this but I'm gonna have a point on the top of that one okay and then I'm gonna come in and start doing the Egyptian curl which is I'm coming over into this area touch the tip of the last one and then come back down oh these are so fun so fun really swing out there. Watch how I can force this to go into the area I want it to go. I don't have to worry about where I've been. Right. Because I'm going to go over the top of where I've been. And that's what's the best part. You don't have to worry about that. Coming up here. I can see I have one more that I'm going to do to fill that corner. Almost back to the very corner now. And right here. Now, I don't have to go all the way back. I can stop right there and start making more curls, and they're going to be really pretty in this bright orange fabric. Right. They're going to look like another design in that fabric. There, yeah. yeah. And you see how I just, yeah. Curl, touch, and down. Just like, no, you didn't go up there before. It doesn't matter. <laughs> nope. And down, maybe one more right there to make sure that that gets quilted. Then I'll go up again, and I'm going to go in toward it, point, and down. Oh, it did exactly what I wanted it to. <laughs> Look at that. It made a really pretty design in that white area. And I will do the very same thing here that I did over there. Swing out, come around. Oops. There we go. And down. I'm going to swing out over here. I feel like I could have put one more in there, so I'll just go do it right now. Ha <laughs> ha. I just want you to know that this is just like forgivable, you know? Right. You don't, it doesn't have to be, um, I'm sure you could make it absolutely perfect if you weren't going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> I like it. it gives, it's a different look. They're all going to be unique, yep. which is really nice. Yep. And it has your eye looking for things. And you see in that orange area how that curl just really made that into a design, didn't it? Right. Yeah. Oh. Hello. I love that. That's fun. That is fun. OK. Now it's your turn. OK. All right, Linda, so I'm over here on my log cabin, and I'm going to kind of do two different things like you did, um, but I'm going to be marking a lot of stuff out because I want to follow it a specific way. Okay. So I'm going to take this ruler and my chalk pencil, and I want to kind of break this into a triangle on this side and a triangle on this side. Mm -hmm. So I'm just coming in with that chalk line. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I can actually just go to here, have that diagonal line here all the way over. Okay. And I'm going to start in the center because that's where I have all my, uh, when it comes to marking, that's where I have all mm -hmm. these piecing lines. Mm -hmm. So I'll mark those down too towards the center as best I can. Kind of just gives me a line to follow. And then from that point, I want to measure off because I want to have basically certain channels to follow within. Okay. So I'm put little different designs right. and I'll leave some blank. Um, so I'm going to measure these off and we'll do, we'll do two inch channels. Do one there. And then we'll hop, just move it over. Make it easier. There. There. 
there. And this last one will be a little tiny one. So I'll do the same thing on this other side. And this is just going to give me that marking that I need to give it um, a straight line all the way out. Per okay, se. you're making sure it's parallel with that center line? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So following along with that. So double checking now that you've got me I'm there. I'm wondering if you can use, if these points are all even. You see how you have a point, 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 you know? Of course, you wouldn't come clear down to here, but wouldn't those oh, be all even? Oh, I see what you're talking even? about. Okay. Yeah, I could do that too. Because unless they were, yeah, they would be even. Yeah, they, they would be. So using this point, you mean? Uh-huh. And then coming in and finding where this one is. Right, as long as it's parallel, parallel with, with that, that initial line. Should be okay. Yeah. So we're going to use this line instead. Well, we've got this point. I didn't mean to correct you. No, I'm you're fine. It's just something, yeah, something to think of. Me. Yeah, <laughs> something to think of for sure. I didn't even think about that one. That one, and that, that one. one, and then that'll yeah. be up there somewhere. Okay, well, two different sizes. That's right. That's what we'll go with. That's okay. Alrighty. So, kind of staying in that same parallel idea would be following this all the way out. Mm -hmm. So, making sure that that line is staying straight from here all the way out to there. And we'll start with our center one first. Why not? And then I can just use this as a guide. We'll turn that down just a little bit for me. All right, I switched back over to regulated mode. You were in constant. Um, now that I'm using <laughs> a template, I, I need to, I need to go fast. into regulated. So Sorry. I'm good. I'm going to drop down to um, that two inch mark. So kind of following in the ditch to that two inch mark and then following that on. All right, so we're just going to keep going and I'm just going to make these all a little bit different. Not that big of a deal. I well, really like asymmetrical, actually. Yeah. Pull up here. Drop down a little bit. And now I'll say, all right, that'll work. But the biggest thing is making sure that you, know, you have these straight lines on this ruler. So mm -hmm. as long as that's following on that same diagonal, we should be fine. And you're good. Yeah. Okay. Let's drop that one there. Bring it over. Do it a little bit shorter there. And come up, come down, and make our way all the way to here. Alrighty, Linda, so I finished off drawing out and stitching out all the straight lines across the other side. Mm -hmm. um, so for here, I'm just going to be putting um, a simple ribbon candy. Oh, perfect. And every other one. That would go, yeah, kind of so contrast fast. it a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, so I've got this, and I'm using this uh, template just to give me a straight line to follow for the bottom piece of it, because okay. I have that open. So I'll start with my straight line, move that off to the side, and then just ribbon candy it all the way up here. Follow this up the ditch. Nice to have that ruler handy. Right. I'm going to follow this all the way up to that top portion, move the ruler off and then start making my way. So you're keeping those lines perpendicular to your lines that you've already stitched. Right. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I'll follow that. That makes Use that this. easy. And just follow that all the this way This is going to look so good because that's just going to pop up the areas that you didn't quilt. Right. Yeah. What a modern um, look yeah. this is. Very modern. So I'll follow those all the way up to there using my template to follow up the ditch, move it if I need to, all the way up to this portion, take it off to the side here, and then just put in that ribbon candy. All so the way I would think that the point was to make sure that your ribbon candy is perpendicular to those lines, because you could get real mixed up. I could yeah. get real mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> and get them going diagonally and all that. Right. Unless that's what you want it to do. Yeah, that's already looking fantastic. Moving that off, back and forth. And this would be something you could easily do in constant. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to having that regulator, because you're here, it goes zzzz. That's all right. The noise doesn't bother me. No, that's what okay. I need to do. So yeah. I'll take that, skipping that center one, following here. And going back and forth. Looking great. 
able to do it one-handed like you. Look at that, <laughs> and only one day. <laughs> All right, so up here, oh, excellent. that piece, and then we'll use this. I love that. You know, not everybody likes feathers uh -huh. and, and flithers and flowers and, you know. Right. So get a little, a little this something. This is a good bold look and very different. So the, the ones next to it in the dark area, because you're using, you're doing the dark area, would look so dramatic. Right. Yeah. Which would be a, you know, a little different from that initial thought that we had mm -hmm. for yours. Mm -hmm. Taking it here, rolling it, going up and around. And for this one, we're actually going to stop right there. There you go. Look just at like that. that. It's awesome. So just giving it a little bit of texture, and it kind of moves that way mm -hmm. out the triangle. Okay. All right. So then I've just kind of taken the ruler, and I've just stitched right across this top piece here to get okay. to this other section. And for this side, just to get, since it's a sampler, to give you a couple different ideas, we're kind of just looking at ignoring the piecing in yeah. general. Yeah, I get um, that. And just throwing in some swirls. Perfect. Okay, swirls that kind of build on each other. Um, so we'll just kind of start in here, and I am in constant speed. I've moved to constant for this section. So we're going to come in, and I know you had it up a little bit, so I might have to <laughs> slow it down the second I get going. So we'll see. Okay. And here we go. And yeah, not too bad. So swirling it. You can handle that. Yeah, it's not too bad. See, this will be such a good um, contrast to what you've done on the other side. Right. And so, so. I'm just coming in, leaving plenty of room to make my way out. Mm-hmm. Kind of do an echo on it. Yeah, okay. maybe come into more of this section I think everybody here. Everybody can do that. That's such a good one for a beginner. Right. Yeah. And this is kind of switching it out to be where some of these would be a little have some peacock ones, mm -hmm. where there's more of that teardrop build. Give it a little interest. Yeah, and then some of them you can bet. just go into being a swirl. And you can just build as many echoes on that as you would like. You know, whatever look you want to give it. Come back and fill in certain sections if you need to. So interesting. Very good. But definitely something that anybody can do. You know, I just kind of it, playing around. Yeah, you can do it on paper and, and just do a little practicing and you're good at it. Right. And you're doing that pretty one. dense, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, could you could even do, do it a more lot open. bigger in that area. So let's do this section a little bit more open. And it would go faster, is what For I mean. sure. No, yeah, 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 yeah. It depends on how dense the rest of the quilting is on the quilt. We really have to be careful about that, um, you know, not having big areas and then little areas because it distorts the quilt. Right. Very nice. Yeah, I like that contrast. I think quilters are always, like, making sure they don't get cornered. Yeah. <laughs> They're always aware of, oh, i got to get out of here. Um, what's my plan? Yeah. <laughs> but definitely being okay with kind of ignoring that piecing line mm -hmm. um, will definitely help you work your way through this. Oh, yeah. And I'll stop right there. Super. Well, I can see that you are going back to your Statler. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to have a computerized fix. A little fix. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that free, okay. freehand's gotten to that's me. That's all right. I understand <laughs> the computerized people are, you know. That's the way I've grown it's up. It's scary, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell yeah. you practice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I've kind of done here is I took a chalk pencil, and I've marked out these uh, this log cabin block as if it were just triangles. An X. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you don't have a Statler, you can place these patterns in as if they were just triangle pieces mm -hmm. and what that gives you the ability to do is just you know kind of mark that off with your boundaries mm -hmm. um, but for me I'm going to be using draw a pattern and just click out points along this with I point see. to point. All right okay let's see that. Alrighty. Okay Linda so I'm going to be using one of your point to point triangles mm -hmm. okay I'm going to be using the LT2236 Dakota's triangle. Okay. So I'm going to have that pattern selected and the first thing that I want to do is I do want to go ahead and draw a boundary just around the outer piece of the block. So I'm just gonna start clicking, and you can have as many points clicked as you want in a boundary. 
normally on bigger blocks you want to do you know a couple more as you go mm -hmm. or if you have seam lines that you can hit that's better too because things aren't perfect no oh, they're not my. <laughs> 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 Which is, you know, something we can, you know, take into account when we're freehanding. Mm -hmm. We can see that, but whenever we're setting it up in the computer, we have to set it up, you know, as best as we can, because that's how it's going to go out. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to come around and finish this, and once I get to that last point, I can exit my drawing. And then what I'm going to do is I want to go into draw pattern. Okay. You're going to draw pattern? Well, yeah, with the point-to-point -point pattern. Okay. Draw pattern's the function. With the head of the machine, what I'm going to do is I want to click the four outer points. Um, so, and I'm going to be doing that counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because direction does and matter when you're clicking important. these out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start here at the bottom left, and I'll click a point here. Come all the way across to this section on this right hand side and click a point here. Come up to the top right, click a point there top left, click a point here, and then I will have to return back to the bottom left and click a point there as well. Okay, you have to return, you can't just exit out. For this instance, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to select that point, and then I'm going to close my drawing and exit my drawing. But since we're already here at the machine, this is another point that we would want to make sure we can find that direct center, because mm -hmm. if we need to make any adjustments with those patterns, we want to make sure that it's going off the center of the block. Yeah, because okay? that's in a white square. Right, and yeah, so it's yeah. like, I don't know where that's going to be. So I can go into draw boundary, mm -hmm. and I can just make myself a little X right here. Okay. And so then on the computer screen, I'll have that X, You'll know right and I can point is. everything to that. Okay. So I'm going to mode over to draw boundary, and with the head of the machine, I can just click these points. I'm just kind of making this in an X fashion. It's down here, over, and then I can close that and exit. And if you notice on the computer screen, you can see that that little X point mm -hmm. isn't in relation to those patterns at all. No, it isn't. <laughs> and that's okay. That just oh. means the block has shifted a little bit as we've been quilting through. Okay. okay. So we want to fix that on the screen with our handles to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm zooming in a little bit further, and Linda, if we see these points, we can really tell now that they're not anywhere near that center marker. So what I want to do is I can click on these patterns individually, and if I double left click, I can go through my handles until I get to my universal handles. Now these are where I have three of them in one, and I'm going to use my gray handle here, and then just kind of maneuver that point right exactly where it needs to be. So I'm going to do that to all four of these triangles. That's going to shift everything into alignment into the center. Just like that. Now when I zoom out and I take a look, you can see that everything's flowing right to that center just the way we want it to be. And you can even see it has that kind of secondary design here between these petals. So if you wanted to, you could also go in and maybe freehand some feathers in there if you would like. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Linda, so let's go over to start quilting and have our machine move to its starting point. Pull up my bobbin thread, and then we're going to let it tie off and it's going to start stitching. I know. I can see that the square next to that pattern would um, make a really cool design as well. For sure. On, especially on a log cabin. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the way they would all mesh together at uh -huh. the end, uh -huh. they would look basically like blocks on point. Yeah. Like kind of, you know, how they all fall out together. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. So then you could also, like we were talking about earlier, if you didn't have the draw pattern function, you, know, you didn't have a styler, which is perfectly okay, you could still set these up as individual triangles mm -hmm. and then just make sure that if you need to manipulate those points that you didn't manipulate them off the center right. before you start that. it. Yeah. Oh, that stitched right in the yeah, ditch. Yeah, right in the ditch. Oh. I was checking my fabric here real quick just to double check. <laughs> I saw it going and I was like, uh-oh. Oh. All right, coming here to that point. That's close, yeah. And it's off to the next section. All right, Linda, look at all these just pop right there They're to that absolutely center. absolutely perfect. Aren't That's they? awesome. And this, this gives you enough open and mm -hmm. simple enough. Right. I would never have chosen that design, but that, I mean, 
you know, it's just beautiful <laughs> on that. It and that alternate design, I wish I could do a log cabin with that now. Right. Because I would love to see what the alternate design would be. Well, it is, it is your pattern. So That's you've right. got it. You're I good can to go. Use it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so it's coming here to tie off, and then we can pull up our threads and let's take a look at what it looks like. Okay. So I'm going to start on this one, and again, I'm going to come through with that serpentine mm -hmm. between the lights and darks. And I'm going to leave that square on the lights. Okay. You could, you know, make that decision where you're going to put that, or you can divide it in half. Right. But I'm going to have it there, so. Okay, so now I'm going to go around, and you go down to the bottom, come around. I've got to really speed this up. So I go down to the bottom, come around. You want to swing in and come around about the same each time. Go to the bottom, come around. You know I left enough space there at the top to get myself out. Come around and up to the top. We'll put one in here. We know we have to get out. And this, I would have already stabilized this right. square. You know that, right? A little stitch in the ditch and yeah. whatnot because I just don't do well without stabilizing them, but we're kind of pressed for time. So so I'm gonna put that in there. Now, okay. just so you know, I mean, you could do this in each thing. Right. You could come along, and great way to practice your freehand skills. Right. Do something different in each one of those. Right. Okay. But I'm going to put a feather in this area. Okay. And then I'm gonna do something fun in this area. Okay. I am just winging this, so I, I, I like that. Enjoy. Okay. All right. Um, hand me a pencil, chalk okay. pencil, just so that I can kind of get this curve the same. I'm just going to kind of come over here, and I could certainly use a template for that, you know, kind of end it right at the end of that and end that right there at the end of that. Just that's all I that need. Same line. Okay. Yep, that's all I need. So then I'm going to start coming over here like this, and I'm just coming back. I think I'll make a heart here. Okay. I like hearts. Is that okay? I do too. It's, it's lovely. Thank you. You're doing a great job. Thank you. You're so good for me. Oh, okay. I'll try. All right. That's the top. Okay. okay. Now I left areas here because I want to echo it. Okay. So I knew that ahead of time. All right. Can you believe I thought ahead? Hey. Yeah, I, I did. Hey, it beats <laughs> what I was thinking, so okay. Now I'm just, I'm ignoring the piecing. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I will put a little curl in here, like that. Gotcha. And then I'm going to come out here like this, and here. So I'm going to come down here and match my little curl, right? Okay. And then here, and here, and now I'm going to echo. Did I see you're doing deep echoes? I'm doing deep echoes. Okay. Yes, so I can really swing out on these. Fill up some of that space. And I will echo my curls. I might even, I can reverse and come back like this. This right. is a very nice white area there, so. Really fill in that space. Mm -hmm. I like that. Love it. Corey, you know, when I looked at these polka dots, I was really inspired. Okay. Yeah, I love this fabric. Yeah. And so I decided, well, let's just continue that. So I'm going to go around. I'm in constant right now. And I'm using my templates. I'm just going to go around. This one I'm going to try to do all the way around. See if I start about 5 o'clock here. Mm -hmm. And then, do I have a clamp on that side? Yes. Well, I need another one. You got two. I'm just starting that. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can do it all the way around. Let's try it. Come on, here we go. Now that we have clamps on. You really have to have your clamps on good because right. otherwise you're pushing too hard on there. They might not be perfect circles because Corey's sitting next to me, but <laughs> other than that, they're going to be great, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to know this is so much fun. We are, we are having, having fun. fun. Yes. Well, this is what people run into at home. Really? You know, on their machines. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. they don't have a jokester with them, you know. That's right. But... I mean, oh, that one it. is really good. That one is good. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to do some little swirls. 
around these circles. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna go around the circles again, because you can hardly believe that they're not perfect, but they're not. I know the viewers are going like, what? <laughs> Does she have any idea what she's doing? Yes. Okay, now I'm gonna go around, and all I have to do is just hang on to the machine, because it wants to go around these lots of times. Because this is going to raise these right up. Okay? Okay. And then I'm just gonna come out and I'm going to meander till I get over to the next one. Okay. And I better finish meandering in that area. There we go. So it's that same thing. You don't wanna get cornered. You wanna make sure you get everything done. Right. Right. Trying to use one hand. So this is just going to make the circle stick out a little bit more right. than it would normally. And over here. And the nice thing is you can come out of the circle wherever you want. Right. It's not that bad to stay on that circle. You know, we just try. When you freehand, you really have to get over yourself um, as far as being perfect. Yeah, I'm still working on that. I know. <laughs> It's the same for all um, computerized owners because, you know, they just are so used to doing perfect, perfect right. work. I know, we'll just go over the top of it and okay. cut it later. All right. I'm okay with that. So we just are meandering. We stitch in the ditch, get back over here. You see, I need to just slow down. Yeah, I was gonna say, you're, you're trying to go, you're trying, trying to beat get, the machine there. I know, you're doing yeah. what I'm doing. <laughs> So I'll just turn it up. Oh, okay, well, um, there you go. I'll match the machine to how fast I'm going. So we're doing the swirls around these. Mm -hmm. This might be too fancy for modern quilting, though, because, um, I don't know, maybe they don't do that much quilting. It's more minimal. I know more it lines is. and more. This multiple stitching shapes. though is cool. Yeah, no, I like it. Because if you make a mistake, you just go over it again. Awesome. There, there we go. Yeah, and it works out just fine. So for this one, you're really trapped in this. Would you go around? Would you find a way into the circle and make another loop around, or I did could, you just stitch or I can just Okay. Stitch around it. Gotcha. You thought I was cornered, didn't you? No, not necessarily. I knew you were going to find yeah, your you way did. out. You no. thought I was cornered. No, admit no, it. no, no, not at all. <laughs> I was just trying to see another way out of the corner. I'm trying to adapt, Linda. That's what we do. we got to adapt. Very good. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> One-handed adaption. Here. There you go. Yep. Now it's a party. This variegated thread is very pretty. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can find your way in and out of those circles and go over them again as many times as you want. Right. So all over the quilt in the dark areas would be all of these circles. Right. Pretty cool. I like it. And you know all the rules for meandering. No crossing. No points no and points. no pattern. No pattern. Oh. I paid attention. You did. Yeah. You did an A. Oh, I was wanting some M&Ms, but I'll take an A. Okay. You <laughs> know the M&Ms. There we go. So that would be pretty fantastic on the quilt. Yeah, I mean, for that sure. That is going to be like, sort of like the lines that you did. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to really stand out. Right. And I love the feather. Yeah. And that cut down the work I had to do by going around in the outside. Yeah. So just so many fun ideas to do on these. That was super fun. I love that. And there's a lot of ideas there mm -hmm. for different parts of quilts, you for know. For sure, not just for a turn dash, yeah. all over the place. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.